Alright, everybody, welcome back uh, to our third and also our final adventure of the evening, which I've entitled Beneath the Sands. Uh, let us take a brief moment and introduce our heroes before we get in. And really, as I always say with this particular crew, uh, and crews of like level, these heroes need no introduction, but we do it anyway. Uh, our myth tier heroes. Uh, first up, we have Euchunkus Uwapli, the High Priest and Bringer of Bill. How are you, Euchunkus? I'm well. How are you? I'm also doing quite well. Uh, Euchunkus, what's new? Yes. <sighs> uh, you know. Just. Yeah, no, I get inquisiting, it. Inquisiting. As yeah, per usual, thinking about eating dogs. You're on your the, grind. Since the island last week, I've spent a lot of time, you know, on that island. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Spending time with the miscellaneous monsters and so on and so forth. Yeah, converting a lot. Mm -hmm. Making sure no other religions get in. Uh, you know, the usual I mean, thing. No other, religion, no other religions are allowed to get in? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's going to no. be a cloud. Uh, it's going to be a cloud. Are, do you still... Now, I have a question, Yishak, and this is a big question. Mm. Who is greater, cloud or bill? The cloud. Okay. And Bill is a just sort of a... Uh, Bill is a is part of the cloud. Subservient to the cloud. Okay. So Bill is tantamount to the cloud. It's like 1% of the cloud or that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, a part of the cloud. Okay, yeah. Sure, I understand yes. now. Yeah. So, you know, missionaries show up at the island and they don't leave. Uh, because I killed because, them. Because you've... Con oh. <laughs> Well, well occasionally we get a convert, but usually that's only after the, the screaming and begging for one's I life. Mean, you chunk is, you are, <laughs> you know what? You really believe in your cause and what you do, and I think that's great, you chunk is, and I have a lot of respect for that about you. And I don't believe in other people's causes. I'm, that is also very much true. You chunk is, welcome back. It's good to have you again. Um, next up, we have uh, Silchris. Uh, it's a Silchris of House of Shaw, but really it's Silchris of the Frozen Crown these days. Silchris, how are you? Oh, I'm all right. How are you? Uh, I'm doing very well. Uh, you sound very cheerful today. Uh, what's going on? What, what's new? Oh, well, I don't know if you know, but me and my family were celebrating my birthday. Day, and so now I'm 13! Ah! You're thir 13 years old? Uh, congratulate. well, I guess, you know, congratulations on your survival for another year. Uh, 13 years old is pretty impressive when one of those years is, you know, as a member of Bartholomew's Adventuring uh, Retinue. Although I suppose mm -hmm. you do have the slight uh, resurrection advantage, but there are some tough things that can happen to you. Um, what did you do to celebrate? Well... Uh, we took my dad out for a walk. Um, we yes, got uh, me a couple of new pets. Um, we had a cake, and I checked to make sure if it was poisoned. It was. Mom was proud of me. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I uh, I imagine uh, the cake was poisoned. Yeah. Uh, did you eat said cake? Oh, no, no, no. We fed that to Dad. Is your dad okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's okay. strong. Levi enjoyed it, too. Okay. Uh, did you ever get a non-poisoned cake? Oh, I got some ice cream. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. And that mm. was not poisoned? Nope. Okay. It was delicious. I brought it up from the Nine Hills myself. Uh, perhaps from uh, a certain chef down there? Oh, sounds like I lost Skype. Uh, but we're just going to get it right back. Well, that chef doesn't really like me, so I had to go to Stygia. Mm. Oh, well, I mean, Stygia does... Oh, my God, I'm on such a bad face, frozen on screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, the worst face possible. Um, well, it's all right. You can't expect to look amazing like me. I mean, you're just I a suppose. peon. Uh, I suppose that this is true. Uh, well, Silchris, I'm glad that you had a very happy birthday, and it's good to have you out adventuring once more tonight. All right, you are dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, next up, we have uh, we have 
Silius Judge Silius Gallinotal. The Judge Switch. Well, that's true, but Judge Switch, I mean, you are Silius Gallinotal. Uh, do you prefer to just be Judge Switch all the time? Yes. I mean, fair enough. What can I say do to you, that? Do you call Judge Dredd by his real name? That's a fair point. Although I always assumed that Judge Dredd's real name was just... <laughs> Sorry, there's some funky stuff happening on the webcam. Uh, I always assumed that Judge Dredd's real name was just Judge Dredd. Uh, like, first name Judge, last name Dredd, but who am I? Uh, yeah. Switch, what's new? Well, I mean... You probably didn't pick this up, since you're only a voice in the clouds. Yes, but, yes. Uh, the reason that Selkris's dad is okay, and Levi is okay, is because devils and demons are immune to poison damage. Well, I'm uh, very much aware that Levi is uh, totally fine, but, uh, well, I always assumed that... That's because Selkris is a little a devil, is what I'm saying. Uh, well, I mean, that seems a little bit... Uh, yeah, that's a little rude. My dad's a Duragard now. We perform the ritual on him and everything. He's Wait, such a good guard dog. That's also very strange. Uh, but far be it for me to question. I mean, everyone has their own sort of family traditions. Uh, yeah. I know that you certainly have your own fair share as well, Switch. I mean, aside from the fact that my grandpa is like a kraken or a leviathan or something like that. Yeah, know. yeah. Yeah. Everyone's got their own sort of uh, issues and, and, and kind of family baggage to work through on their own. Uh, yeah, now, like that 13th Galanotal child that I may or may not have murdered at uh, dinner a few years ago, and them may or may not be coming back as an undead or something, I don't know. Uh, there's no proof of those particular murder charges. Uh, I believe all of those records disappeared. Yes, as did the body, but um, yeah. apparently the body's back. And alive, but undead. Uh, Should have well, eaten it. I mean, you, Chonkus, that is, I guess, your answer for everything. I, I ate my you... siblings. <laughs> you should definitely have done something with it. Maybe feed it to your peons. Yes, uh, my peons speaking, can have peons, you know. Speaking it's of okay. Peons. Hello, you, Chonkus. Hi, how's it going? Move, Moving quickly along. We Have we uh, introduced you? Uh, no, we have introduced you, Chankas, uh, but last but not least, and Kurogan, please be less evil for me as we get, there's so much evil in this party, it's incredible, uh, as we get down to Kurogan, the great and powerful. Kurogan, tell me something wholesome, please. Well, we have planned a date for our wedding. Oh, but of course, uh, your wedding is coming up. Uh, when is the actual day? Well, I have scheduled it for, uh, insert random time and date in D&D oh, time years. Why wasn't I... <laughs> Spinkish wait, the 7th. Why wasn't I invited? Well, that is because I'm inviting you now, as well as you, of course, Selkris, and you, Chankus, you are welcome to come as well. I can officiate I, if you want. I suppose Oh, I yes, can. absolutely. I, I too can officiate. I'm, I'm <laughs> paladin. I, I'll also officiate. Oh, God. <laughs> This is getting messy real quick. Um, now, Kurogan, have, have you figured out what you're going to wear? Have you chosen a venue yet? Oh, uh, well, I, I have actually definitely chosen a venue. We decided to, uh, to go somewhere nice and scenic. Probably a beach somewhere. Nice beach wedding. But also kind of on an elevated platform. And I will be wearing my finest suit. Well, that sounds very pleasant. Are, are you thinking along the Crimson Coast, or are you going to go somewhere a little bit more traditional? Mm, probably Crimson Coast. Okay. I mean, oh, afterwards, we God. plan on Crimson taking Coast. on a Kraken, so, I mean... Maybe I mean, maybe <laughs> can talk to my dad, and he can set up to, for the entire Crimson Coast coats to be closed off for your wedding. Oh, no, no, no. The more people, the merrier. I want to celebrate this grandiose occasion. Well... I suppose before we can have this glorious and very happy day that will soon come, uh, we must first uh, get you through and see if you are able to make it out of your mythic adventure here alive. Um, so, where we begin, uh, we are going to begin essentially right in the heat of the action. The four of you stand amidst the frontier, uh -huh. and to your left, uh, the sheriff of a town within the frontier, uh, 
uh, specifically the town of Green Meadows. He kind of looks over the group of you and goes, well, we're here. Not that you, uh, well, not that you wouldn't have been able to tell on your own. And the thing that he's pointing at, and you've seen it for some time as you were kind of walking to this point, uh, is amidst the kind of deserts of the frontier, uh, there is now just a strange prism floating, uh, a little bit off the ground, uh, part of the bottom of it. Um, uh, you, you can tell that it's not really being supported, you can tell that it's floating in, uh, but the bottom of it, where it comes down to a point in the kind of diamond-like shape that it's made of, still kind of touches the ground, but there's no way it could support the weight of this thing, because it is absolutely massive. It's made of what looks like solid kind of black obsidian, uh, and it is just this huge, huge shape that is rising out of the desert. Um, standing around it, there are all sorts of kind of uh, people that are just looking at it, uh, just staring from a distance. Uh, some of them have made signs. You hear a doomsayer over on the side of the, uh, uh, over kind of off to the side of where you're standing a little bit, kind of calling out about it. We shall pledge our souls to the black prism that it may not destroy us, that it may lead us on to a brighter tomorrow. Uh, and the people that are kind of standing there are all just kind of looking at him and nodding uh, as this thing looks to be almost a mile across as it's kind of looming out of the desert. Um, the sheriff looks to you again. Held you down because, well, got a hole on the side of it. A uh, friend of ours from over on, uh, well, was a friend of ours. Uh, he was out here in the desert not too long ago and he found something sticking up out the ground. He's doing a bit of a survey, you see? And, uh, well, he found this kind of triangle pointing out the sand. From that time, I suppose, unburied. Uh, touched it, and he heard kind of a low rumbling sound. Uh, and you will all hear that same rumbling sound now. Uh, it seems that this entire kind of massive structure that is now monolithic here in the desert um, is giving off some sort of strange humming. Um, excuse me, I can't hear the humming over the, the doomsayer. One second. Hey, doomsayer! Could you I'm... say the doom somewhere else, please? We're kind of doing business here. And yea, those who would stand against us to stand in strength of our worship, they shall be cleansed by the great spirit. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, cleanse, cleanse, cleans, whatever. So I'm going else. to point at the doomsayer, and suddenly a massive black shadow appears behind him and eats him. And then Jeremiah licks his lips. Uh, oh, Jesus. All right. Um, oh, I was getting him. Why are you guys fighting over who eats who? Just eat everyone, then. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Not the innocent ones. <laughs> you innocent ones. Uh, it's not a question of if this doomsayer can avoid being eaten because he cannot. It is a question of which of you ends up getting the doomsayer, which you may decide how that ends amongst the I mean, right now. Jeremiah teleports 60 feet per turn. So. I mean, you ever see that play with the two T-Rexes and they pick up the guy and then they rip him in half? Oh, yeah, totally. All right, let's do that. I go over there. <laughs> Have fun. You watch I put on my T-Rex costume just for this occasion. <laughs> You watch as the kind of, um, you, you watch as the sheriff that you're speaking to looks over at the, oh god, you're in the T-Rex costume too, <laughs> uh, as you chunk us in a dumb inflatable T-Rex costume, uh, and a giant Vanderhob, uh, both start tearing this doomsayer apart, uh, the sheriff looks on aghast and in horror. Oh, oh god, oh, that's no, that's the the queen. Queen just kind of over under his breath. Switch past the sheriff on the back and says, Don't worry, we'll take care of it. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Don't worry about it. It's a, uh, uh, he a mumble under his breath. It's a shame what those adventurers are able to get away with. Yeah, uh, so Kurgan's over in a corner vomiting. Fine, fine people. <clears throat> ooh, that, ooh, that guy gave me a little indigestion. Fine people. Don't worship a big black stone in the desert. It does nothing. Clouds provide... You don't have a lot of those. Well, clouds provide rain. You need more of that. Worship the cloud, you get more rain. Um, go ahead and make me a religion check. You would. I'm gonna give you a 
religion or persuasion and you have advantage. I'm better at persuasion. Because they're more afraid of you than they are of the big black uh, sphere right now. Or uh, shape, is a better word for it. I throw in a little bit about the cloud's wrath if you don't worship it as well then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they kind of look to you and one of them goes, Indeed, hail the, hail the cloud! Yes, praise the cloud. And you're not sure how long it's going to stick, but they're at least telling you that they're going to worship the if cloud. If I come back out and anyone's not worshipping the cloud, there's going to be bad things. <laughs> okay. Uh, because the cloud will deliver you from this evil, whatever this thing is. Yeah, you watch as they all sort of nod, uh, and the sheriff kind of continues to speak to you uh, over there, kind of self-pressing Kurogan. We're still hanging back a little bit. Um, and... Um, as I was saying, my uh, friend of mine uh, surveying this region, and he, uh, well, he found it, it touched it, it reacted, it started rumbling like it's been doing, and rose up out of the sands, you can see. Uh, and, I mean, there is very visibly, like, a lot of disturbance in the surrounding terrain, where it appears this thing kind of, like, rose up out of the ground from. A lot of it is kind of collapsed back in, and the winds that are kind of thick in this part of the desert has caused a lot of the sand to kind of spread back out, but you can tell that there's definitely a pretty big depression. So I uh, want y'all to go in and, and look at it. Alright. As Come you can on. see up there, well, uh, one more piece of advice, as you can see up there, um, that's kind of a, a doorway to it, and you can see the little, uh, and there's kind of a ramp extending out of it, leading down, uh, as if beckoning entry. Um, but uh, and he points, uh, he points over uh, to a little blue spot on the ramp, and he goes, uh, that right there, you see it? Yeah. Well, it's my friend. What? Uh, that's what's left of him. He, he started walking up that thing, some kind of, uh, some kind of energy shot out of, shot out of the top of the entrance, and, uh, well, just a, a blue spot now, it looks like. Uh, that's the a shame. Uh, <clears throat> Levi, do you want to scout? Uh, Levi looks at you <laughs> like, I mean, no, but he's going to because you said so. Alright, don't worry. It won't hurt at all. Uh, Alright. You have uh, Levi going kind of flying up and into the, uh, up the ramp. <laughs> Alright, uh, he does so, um, as he gets to kind of close to the top of the ramp, uh, around the spot where that kind of blue stain on the ramp is, uh, you watch as the, uh, kind of a small crystal that's kind of above the doorframe begins to kind of radiate blue, uh, and you hear kind of like a... Alright, that's all, Levi, come on. Uh, do you want him to keep going or come back? Come back a bit. Okay, he backs up, uh, and it kind of... What happens when Switch gets to that blue spot? Um, I mean, as you're getting closer to it, uh, you want to walk up the ramp? Yeah, I can type in the chat. Um, oh, well, speak. Speak your words. Uh, and, okay, so you, you walk I up the ramp. I climb onto the ramp. Wonderful. head towards the blue dot. Perfect. Uh, and... As you do so, um, as you're kind of getting a closer look at it from the distance, it's kind of a blue circle. Uh, you're seeing it's more of a blue stain. Uh, and the ramp... You still hear that kind of sound begin to activate as you get closer. Do you power through? I'm going to take out my shield and, like, have it in front of me between myself and that little laser crystal thing. Good luck! Um, Alright, uh, make me a deck save. Ah, my best saving throw. Um, and apparently it is. Uh, as you watch the kind of point where you're at, um, just you're kind of like moving to the side, and uh, as you do so, you kind of throw the shield in front of like the last kind of bit of corner where the laser would have hit, uh, and it uh, it strikes into the um, uh, it strikes into the ground. You see the bottom side of your shield. Uh, it just kind of 
like a little bit of the corner of it, or your shield is magically enchanted. So this doesn't even happen. Uh, the laser kind of uh, just kind of fragments off of it uh, and just blasts up into the sky. Uh, you all see this kind of piercing streak of blue light, um, so which you're able to keep moving up if you want, and you watch as the crystal begins kind of charging again. Yeah. Uh, so first is gonna fire off an Eldritch blast at it. Uh, at the crystal itself. Yeah. All right, you fire an Eldritch blast. Um, yep. I'll see. I mean, you hit it because it's a stationary object. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of, ding, just kind of thinks harmlessly off of it. Could <laughs> I, on its next attack, redirect the laser to hit itself? Uh, you could try. Uh, it would be uh, fairly difficult, uh, and if you fail, you would just get hit by it. Uh, but if you want to go for it, you can. Yeah, I'll go for it. All right. Um, this is going to be, uh, I think, making sure that that angle is there. Uh, I will let you pick either dexterity or intelligence for this. I think those are the two most relevant ones. Are they saves or checks? Uh, these are going to be checks, uh, because you're just standing there actively waiting, like aiming. I'm not just standing there, I'm walking up. Well, yeah. Um, well, you were already kind of past it. If you wanted to move past it into the thing, I thought that's what you were doing. What, did you go back after the first one? There you go. Okay. Uh, so I kind of want to see what it does as well. Yeah. Um, you um, kind of angle the shield and it... Uh, starts kind of powering up uh, and you do your best to hit it but right as it gets near you you kind of want to readjust instinctively uh, and you turn the shield um, you, you kind of like turn the shield to like angle it a bit more and you do it too far and you just kind of bounce it off the shield into your own sort of shoulder uh, as you suffer uh, a pretty sizable chunk of damage uh, 32 points of force damage. Uh, uh, is this a spell damage? Do I resist um, it with my aura? This is actually discrete from spell damage. It's just a magical this, effect. It's not spell. Uh, it's not a spell. Uh, it is. I guess I don't even actually wouldn't even call this a necessarily a magical effect. Um, uh, as it kind of hits you, you feel the kind of the beam strike into the armor and you feel your muscles underneath the armor start to kind of like tense and and contort uh, and shift and almost like bits of your arm kind of dissolve uh, and as you kind of are looking at your arm underneath it uh, there are now just like parts of your shoulder and arm that have been kind of like worn and weathered away uh, and some of that kind of like blue goop that you now see staining the ground beneath you is like dripping out of your armor okay the does this crystal Sorry. look like it can move? Uh, I'll, no, I'll it's stationary. Run Good. As again, it's now recharging again, so do you want to go back to it? I'll run to the entrance and I'll shout down, It really hurts! <laughs> okay! Uh, Krogan is going to flap escape back a little bit. Then and then I'll... watch- Soul Chris. Soul Chris is going to hop onto his back. I'll lay then... hand myself back up to full. Okay. As Krogan stretches his neck muscles, he speaks the word fly and the cloak becomes oh, a of pair course. of golden wings uh how long do you have your wings for again it's like a an hour time. yeah that's excellent <laughs> all right so Kuragon, you uh spread out your wings and are now flying as you're just kind of with self crest on my back <laughs> yeah but of course um so crest upon your back um are you just gonna try and dodge past it or what's your plan i'm gonna fly over it um, uh, well, it's like built into the threshold above the door that is the entrance into it. Well, if it doesn't really move, does it shoot a beam in that specific direction, or does it look like it could probably move? Um, the <laughs> crystal itself doesn't seem to move, but you've seen it kind of uh, target a little bit. Like, it wasn't like it shot in the exact same spot every time. Okay. Well, um, in that case, I'm just gonna zoom up to the, uh, Door. Uh, you, well, how heavy are you, Chunkus? Huh? How heavy are you? Uh, probably kind of heavy. I mean, with the twenty strength, do you think it could carry you, Chunkus? Um. Mm, yeah, it would slow you down a little bit. It's fine. I have a sixty fly speed. Yeah. I mean, I could try shattering the orb. 
You could. Let's try that. Oh lord. <laughs> that's not that's not Korgon's voice. Um, so I believe it is um well it's specifically structures. I mean it, it obviously it it fails because it's just a stationary object. Uh, go ahead and just roll me damage on that chatter and we'll see how it does. I mean, that's actually a pretty good shatter. Uh, as you're kind of uh, kind of focusing on that, uh, as you're focusing on that spot, where are you guys standing, by the way? Like, where are you right now? Uh, I'm still at the bottom of the uh, ramp. Um, what about you, you Chunkus? Uh, it's I actually, would... the range is 60 feet on shatter. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're going to have to go up, like, the ramp. The ramp is fairly long. Like, this building is massive, and the ramp extending down to the ground uh, is, you know, a, a solid 120 feet. Uh, so you're going to have to, like, walk up halfway, uh, which is not still to the point where the, the beam kind of okay. went off before. Sure. Uh, so you're kind of there, uh, and the shatter kind of goes off. Uh, as you hit it, you watch as the crystal kind of glows bright, uh, as if it's kind of, like, struggling to absorb the force uh, that has been put into it with this sudden uh, blast, of, uh, blast of thunder in the region. Uh, and it kind of... Uh, it was, like kind of slowly going through its charging phase again, getting ready uh, as you were kind of going up the ramp, uh, and you watch as it kind of staggers a little bit. Uh, the crystal doesn't shatter, but it's now kind of... It's kind of like uh, struggling to handle the force that you put into it, and it's slowing its charge. Uh, it's slowing its charge time. Do I think it's slowing it enough for me to run, Ian? There's, there's one way to find out. Oh, God. This, it's... It's fine. Don't worry. I'll just shatter it too. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll start running after that. He shatters it. Um, all right. Uh, as you're kind of uh, just kind of booking it up the ramp, uh, as it's kind of slowly kind of making its uh, its fire processes, uh, getting itself back set up. Uh, that is turns out it is enough time. Uh, and right as you're kind of diving through the the crystal, just kind of fires on the ground right behind you. But you're already through the door frame. Uh, so switch and uh, switch any junkets are both good. Good. Uh, I guess I shatter it and uh, you're gonna do the same. Yeah, and I'm I'm charging through. I have a lot more movement when I'm flying. Um, you also have oh, yeah, a self you, press. Uh, you're your also back. super. You're fast. like um, twenty pounds. Um, it's fine. Yeah. Your shatter was not nearly as kind of powerful as you, Chunkus, was, or, you know, it was close, but not as powerful. Uh, but you're also significantly faster, so you uh, just kind of zip through with a little bit of extra time that it gives you. Uh, and you now stand within the kind of threshold of this space. Uh, and what you're looking at is the interior of... Well, it's a very strange place that you now find yourself. The walls all sort of glow this off dullish blue color. Uh, everything kind of radiates with energy. Uh, the floor itself... Um, it feels like you have a little bit less weight as you're walking in the space. The floor is kind of like pushing up at you, oddly. Um, if you go and kind of like push at the walls, they also give off force. They seem to like dull and negate your strikes or any kind of force that you put into them as you're kind of moving. Uh, before you is just a very long and narrow hallway. Um, you can see a lot of sort of uh, things that look like they may be passages within this odd kind of chamber that you're now standing before you uh, but all of those things are closed off they look like doors that have been uh, they look like doors that have been sealed uh, and before you now uh, it's just this big very very tall hallway uh, and yeah which I see that you're I, I am flying with uh, Selcrest still God, I don't touch anything I don't trust this weird structure very good. Um, you begin Come to... Come uh, along, peons! <laughs> You're literally on the back of a dragon, Solcrest. How does this feel? It's it's my rightful place. I mean, what are, what are you asking? Alright, so, uh, Kurogan, you're flying a little bit up ahead, and yeah, um, there's about... The hallway itself is fairly narrow. Uh, it's only about 20 feet across, but it's about 150 feet tall, and it kind of slowly slamps upward, along with the kind of shape from you saw outside of this huge, uh, you know, diamond prism kind of shape. Uh, you continue and kind of move along. Uh, as you're moving in, uh, just the sound of the kind of electrical drone is just getting louder, uh, and the sound of the wind of the desert kind of fades into the background. Uh, you proceed. Um, eventually, you reach... Uh, a 
point where you can see that you're opening up into some type of chamber. Um, also, along the walls of the thing, there are very elaborate, uh, there are very elaborate kind of wall etchings and uh, carvings in the wall. It seems to be, it, it seems to be like linguistics in nature, but it is not a language that any of you would recognize. It's not draconic or abyssal. It is not. Oh, very alien. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty weird. As you continue forward, you eventually reach a very massive open chamber. The, the chamber that you're about to move into uh, is perfectly circular, uh, and within it, um, you can see a figure. Um, or circular, the word I meant to use was spherical. Uh, on the other side of it, you can see another path leading forward, and you can also see kind of uh, paths leading to the left and right. It's almost like some sort of deserted ship. De <laughs> deserted. I thought it was funny. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. It's, it's in the desert. Uh, let's go that way. Zulkris points off to the left. Well, uh, before what about that guy? Uh, yeah, I was going to okay. say, there's a, there's a guy. Uh, and oh, you there's see that guy. Oh. Kind of floating in the space, uh, just in the center of this spherical chamber, uh, there's just uh, a figure that's and that has their head down. Um, they're just perfectly in the middle of the room. Um, they are... look fairly relaxed. Uh, their arms are kind of at their sides, uh, and their head is down, and their arms just look like they're limp. Hey! Hey! Answer me, Dion! Yeah, you guys are in the hallway. You haven't thrust, uh, pressed it into this room yet, and it doesn't look like you could actually, like... There's no pathway, there's no floor in this room. It's just an open, empty sphere. It's fine, because I can fly. I'm going to fly oh, yeah, you can fly. <laughs> um, all right. Um, as, you're kind of, uh, as you're kind of yelling at them, uh, Selkris, uh, their head is just kind of down. Uh, but as soon as, Kurogon, you move into the sphere their head just kind of suddenly shoots up uh, and kind of turns in your direction. Uh, their eyes are open and they are just kind of lidless and white. I, wa I wave. Okay. Uh, another thing that you notice, uh, Kurogan, is your flight all of a sudden becomes significantly easier. Uh, as you're not meeting oh. any resistance as you move into this space. No air resistance. Perfect. And... Uh, Selkress, you find yourself having all of a sudden a hard time. Um, you're kind of like floating off of Kurogan's back as Ooh. you go and kind of Ooh. grab onto his uh, grab onto his neck to lock yourself down uh, as this space appears to have no gravity. Uh, whoa, 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 uh, whoa, whoa. Uh, the figure all of a sudden just starts moving at you, Kurogan. Uh, I'd like you to roll for initiative. Okay. Get right up to the entrance. The Best hall. initiative! I'm not I'm even going. going. <laughs> that guy's a nerd. <laughs> You're muted. Hmm? Uh, oh, I was talking to Fox. <laughs> oh, we're, we all have the best initiative. It's yeah, fine. It's, it's the all-around <laughs> best initiative ever. Well, how about that? Um... Uh, in that case, the first to act is Finkel. <laughs> Finkel. Uh, you chuck us, what do you do? Uh, hmm. Wow, I'm not usually first. <laughs> this is a new feeling for me. Uh, alright, he looks threatening. Um, uh, they are now moving uh, in a very spooky manner, just kind of floating in the zero gravity. Is it spooky board. because of how it looks, or is it spooky because they seem threatening? Um, or is it a bit of both? Yeah, it's probably a little bit of both. Mm, um, I don't like that. Most More spooky because of the way that it looks. I'll try shooting it with a guiding bolt. All right. Uh, go ahead and make me an attack roll. Uh, 13 is unfortunately going to miss. Uh, the guiding bolt just kind of, as it moves into the space, uh, you realize, kind of, you remember, oh yeah, magic is a little bit affected by gravity, uh, and it just flies off a little bit. Um, and that, anything else on your turn? Uh, no, I'm set. Uh, in that case, that is going to bring us to, uh, and where is my 
Oh, there it is. Um, that is going to bring us to Switch. What do you want to do? Seeing that the Guiding Bolt missed, uh, Switch is going to draw their Leomano. Mm -hmm. And uh, they still have their shield out, and they're going to cast Bless at second level on the four adventures. No, Levi does not get Bless. Uh, what is the range on Bless? Rude. Uh... Because Kurogan is 60 feet away, because he's flying. Oh. Okay. Uh, and then that means that I... Okay, so I can't bless everyone then. Uh, then I guess I'll I mean, you just... jump into the space if you wanted. Uh, if you... No, I don't want to do that. Fair enough. I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm going to divine favor then. Um. Damn. Very good. Uh, in that case, you watch as your blade begins to glow with radiant energy. Uh, you are on the precipice of entering into this uh, zone. Do you want to stay just uh, on the kind of path in the midst of it? Can I, like, spend my turn, my action, tracking the dude's movement and seeing if, like, I could jump from the hallway to the dude? Um... Yeah, and this absolutely. Zero gravity. Uh, yeah, I want to spend my turn doing that. You want to try and like time a trajectory based on the way this guy is moving. I, so I just want to. I just want to calculate right now. I don't want to actually okay. do it. Yet. Um, go ahead in that case. Actually, you know what? Um, if you're willing to spend your action doing that, I will say that um, on your next turn, you think you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to launch it where he's going to be. Okay. Perfect. Um, Okay, very good. Uh, in that case, that's going to bring us uh, to Thorogon. What do you wish to do? Well, Kurogon hasn't done this in a while, so this is a throwback. He's going to tie his stick and string to his jar of bees and throw it at the Githyanki. Ah, yes. Uh, but of course, <laughs> the jar of bees. He uh, takes 10 bee damage. <laughs> uh, he takes 10 points of bee damage. There's no two ways about that. This is an absolute of the world. Um, and I guess... Can I do anything else? I can't, can I? Can I? Uh... Nope! <laughs> so I'll just wait here, because that's an action, and I'm just gonna prepare. <laughs> okay, so you're just gonna stay stationary where you are? Yes, I'm still flying, but you know. All right. Uh, on Actually, I'm, I might move back a little bit, by closer to everyone else. <laughs> Okay. Um, you move a little bit closer back to the door. I mean, you can get back to the entrance. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just do that. Get back to everyone and be like, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> okay. Uh, you see this guy kind of start moving towards you and you just throw bees and focus. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. All right. Um, in that case, um, they are going to move over to kind of the threshold uh, and um, they are going to uh, what are they going to do? Uh, they're going to run up to you, uh, and uh, you watch as for a brief moment, their eyes kind of flash with a bit of uh, white light, uh, and their speed increases as they're kind of like ramping up, almost kind of charging towards the point, uh, and then are going to make a, uh, they're going to make a strike against, uh, they're going to make a strike against you, uh, I assume a 16 doesn't hit? It does not. Alright. That's fine. Uh, and for this round, uh, that's all he's going to do. Alright. Good for him. Uh, that's going to bring us next to Cellcrest. What do you want to do? Uh, okay. Well, that was that, that 10 damage was at the beginning of his turn, by the way. Uh, yep. I'm going to peek over Kurogan's shoulder. Mm, I don't really like that guy. He didn't answer me. So she's going to fire out two Eldritch Blasts at him. <laughs> um, Alright, the... Uh, they both hit. 
uh, and you watch as they do so. Um, this individual just kind of, uh, right as they're about to make contact with him, the accuracy is perfect, um, there's just kind of a, pfft, uh, a blast as kind of a psionic shield seems to emerge from this individual's form. Uh, ah, the they use the shield spell. Uh, the missiles get uh, knocked away. Levi, sting him! Levi is going to do his sting. A tiny sting. Oh, that should be a plus eight now. Because you need like seven different character sheets. Shush! <laughs> uh, you should still have Levi in the. Yeah, yeah, I just had to up his uh, uh, to hit because ah, yes. it takes self presses. Is that a hit? Okay, 26. Uh, even with shield hits. Nice. A nice try! <laughs> uh, 15 is going to make a constitution saving throw, yes? Yep. I think it's a DC 10, but it just says on a DC. Uh, on a DC. Uh, well, he did <laughs> so I think he's good. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's so he's going to take half of that. Takes 8 points of poison damage. Um, and that's going to bring us to the top of the round. Uh, what was your uh, flat 20? Okay, yeah. So at the top of the round, uh, you watches out of kind of um, the back hall. You start to see a couple more of these figures emerge. Oh, great. There's more of them. Um, and you see two more of them kind of walk. And they're just now standing at the threshold on the far side of the spherical room. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, you can see what looks like a lot of them starting to walk towards here. Mm. Seems... Oh dear. Uh, that's going to bring us to you, Yuchankus. What do you want to do? I'm going to try and kill this guy. Right. Uh, let's throw down a spiritual weapon. Uh, unfortunately, that is going to miss. And, you know, for the heck of it, why not? What's that one? Sacred Flame. Wow. Uh, Dex save. Um, that is a very high deck save. Unfortunately, that misses as well. Uh, anything else on your turn, Yuchanka? Are you going to stay where you are? Uh, yeah, I'm good. All right. Um, that is then going to bring us, I believe it was um, Switch that was next, yes? Uh, question. Am I playing with full Jeremiah or pony Jeremiah? You are phony Jeremiah today, uh, because you are not... Uh, I believe Jeremiah only works on the Crimson Coast in Baradak. Okay. Um, and I'll just have uh, Jeremiah back me up then. I'm going to jump to that dude. Um, you can actually... Because he followed Kuragon and you're all kind of at the threshold into this big spherical space, mm -hmm. um, you are able to... You are able to just hit him without jumping out if you want to, or you can jump to him. It's why I did that, <laughs> so everyone can I'll hit just, him. I'll just hit him without jumping out then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and make me an attack roll. Did that? No. Okay. Um, twenty-three does hit. Okay, and I'll pump a smite on that. That, that feels bad. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, you... Wait, um, um... Wait, I'm not seeing anything. Okay, there it is. Um, oh, by the man, way, it looks like your Laomano... Is that an actual weapon? Because if it is, it's only rolling 1 plus 4 plus 2. Oh. It's not 1d oh. whatever plus 4. Plus two. It's supposed to be a D8, and it's all supposed to be magical, so it's plus one. Well, then it's put yeah, in wrong, and I'm glad I caught that. that. <laughs> um, all right, so it's, that's very odd. Um, I don't know, what's the plus two? Uh, my fighting saw. One oh, okay. Nice. Dual um, link. So. Okay, five so, plus four so plus five. two. Yeah, don't forget plus divine five. favor. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, so it's 18 plus 12 so 30 damage total okay um are you going to make another attack yeah i'll attack again all right 
Uh, 22 actually misses with the shield. Uh, just by one. Um, and we know his AC with shield and without shield. Then. Uh, so, uh, you swing your, uh, you swing your Lemano up. Uh, it cuts into the side of the creature. You watch as the shield kind of buckles under it. it. You feel it almost slowed for a second, and then you strike. You pump the holy energy into it, or in your case, probably some the energy into it. Uh, and uh, with your strike, um, he doesn't really seem to react. Uh, his eyes, like I said before, are just kind of like lidless. Uh, he doesn't really even look like he feels the pain, but his body is getting torn apart. Uh, he's covered in bee stings at this point. Um, <laughs> so, it, it is a 23, because this is a plus one weapon journey, or a peak. Um, oh, well then. Didn't put it in. Yeah. Uh, I still have not fixed it. Uh, okay. Well. So, uh, 11 plus 1 is 12 damage. Uh, and then I'll okay, pump so another an, spite and an add the divine favor. Um, that's yeah. a heavy, uh, well, it's my end divine favor, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as you, yeah. uh, kind of crash into him with the, uh, with the weapon blow, uh, the body just kind of stops moving and just kind of crumbles and gets dashed across over at the wall. Uh, and it's now just kind of floating and kind of like bouncing off the wall in the space. Uh, that's going to bring us to... Uh, Gorgon! Oh man, I didn't even get to hit it! <laughs> well, except for with my bees. Uh, Switch yells, first blood! <laughs> um, are there any more? Uh, yeah, on the other side of the sphere. Uh, there's two more that Good. are in, and then you see a lot behind them. How far away are they? Heads. Um, the entire chamber. Uh, the entire chamber is about 200 feet across. Oof, that's hefty. That means that uh, my bees, uh, they just go back into my jar. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to fly out towards them. <laughs> um, Alright, so you begin... Are you going to dash? Um, no. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get about 60 feet, and that... Oh, that doesn't quite put me at the range. Actually, I'm going to wait for them to come here. <laughs> and I'm going to ready my action to attack when they get cl uh, close enough. Okay. Um, you see them kind of emerge out of the kind of space where they are. Uh, the two of them kind of float up. Uh, and they just kind of start floating across the space, head down, arms at sides, uh, the way that the other one was just kind of moving around. Um, all of them have these just kind of blank white eyes, uh, you can see, uh, which glow a little bit as they move in and they start kind of hovering here. Um, and then behind them, uh, you see a few more pop out, uh, and then four more step over towards, like, the end, uh, and are now standing at the threshold. So there are five now in the room. Ugh, looks like I finally have to get this out! <laughs> uh... Well, uh, is drawing a different weapon or putting away my weapon uh, a free action, or what, what kind of action is that? Um, I'll say that you can just do that. I'm going to put away my Dragon Great Sword and get out Reaver. Um, okay. Uh, anything else on your turn? Or that no, was... that's it. Yeah, well that was their turn. And now it's self-press. Oh, okay. So they're just moving over here. Oh, by the way, oh wait, no, they can't take any more B damage, I forgot. Uh, Never mind. <laughs> yeah, Kurogon, as you're kind of, like, looking out at them over the, uh, over the sort of, like, the tops of the area, um, you can see that there's, like, 30, 40 more of these things that are just kind of, like, walking down the hallway. This looks, this is looking more like a horde, like a zombie horde, than it is, like, people. Guys, there's a lot of them. Like, a lot, a lot of them. Uh, Silkris. How much is a lot? Like, 30... Uh, he counts on his dragon claws. Uh, 35. There's a lot. Uh, that's not good. Uh, is there a hallway they aren't coming down? Um, they, the hallway that they seem to be coming down is the opposite one from you. The opposite one from us is the one they are coming down. The other two are fine, it looks like. Do we want to go that way? Cause, uh... Switch says, nah, I got this. Alright, well, if you got this, 
I mean, okay. I will also help. <laughs> I look uh, forward to seeing it. Um, so Chris is gonna hold her action. If anything approaches her, she'll uh, use it. Also, the fact that she hasn't brought out uh, Levi seriously yet is uh, concerning. All right. Uh, in that case, that's going to uh, bring us then to the top of the initiative, which is uh, Yuchankas. So there's two other paths or one in the, in the end? Yeah, there's two other paths. Um, there's essentially uh, the, four, the, the four cardinal directions. You can go north, which is where they're all coming from, or you could go east or west, and you guys are at south. I'm going to start heading toward the eastern path. Okay. Um, you, Chunkus, how are you going to navigate in this zero-gravity space? Walls off Kurgan, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so the walls, do the walls do that repelling thing still? Um, yeah, you can feel, like, as you're, like, the wall to your left, like, immediately. Yeah. Um, you can feel that they're, like, giving off a little bit of force as you're touching it, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> what do I have no. for items? <laughs> Uh, nothing of use here. Uh, so I can't make really scramble along the wall at all. Uh, can I use my tail similarly to a propeller or perhaps a flagella? Never thought of that before. Go ahead and go ahead and make me an acrobatics check, and I'm going to give you disadvantage on this because this is a. This I'm is already a bad a stretch. at these. It's a little bit of a stretch. All right, you chunk us. <coughs> you kind of like jump off. Uh, you're kind of like trying to spin your tail around as fast as you can behind you like a propeller. Uh, it's not. Uh, it doesn't seem to be giving you a lot of influence. Like there's not like a lot of like air resistance or anything to like push yourself off of even it's described a Kuragon before uh, but you're heading like generally to the east uh, you're not sure if you're gonna exactly mesh up with the kind of threshold uh, that you're going for but you're heading in that direction at least hmm. so since everything is weightless in here I could probably just grab them all or have them all connect to me and fly over there uh, and anything else on your turn you chunk us are you gonna uh... like it's not even a dash, like, you're moving is at, like, a dash speed, but once you kick off, I mean, you're going, so. Yeah, I guess, uh, well, I guess I'll send my spiritual weapon slowly toward the enemy. <laughs> Alright, um, uh, you kind of start moving the spiritual uh, weapon into, like, more of the center, uh, and the, kind of, uh, the, the creatures that are moving up into it are also moving in that direction. Uh, that's gonna bring us then Well, to... I do have an action still. Oh, that was so, bonus action. I forgot. Yeah. My bad. I guess I'll throw one of these just out <laughs> randomly at, like, I don't know, yeah, the closest one. Yeah, you get a guy. Uh, dexterity saving throw. Uh, Does swimming help me here? I have a swim speed. Oh, that should have been... Uh, no. <laughs> Didn't think so. <laughs> no. This is, this is, air swimming isn't swimming or different. Um, yeah, he fails. Five, uh, takes ten points of radiant damage. Uh, kind of, uh, all of these guys look like trained warriors, but they're also weirdly shindly. Um, but he isn't able to dodge your particular sacred flame, but he's not down by it. Um, that's gonna bring us then to, uh, that's gonna bring us to switch. With uh, Switch's new shield aiming skills that she learned, she's going to angle her shield at the hallway with all the zombie creatures starting toward to come towards them, and uh, take a little red rock and smash against the shield, aiming at zombies. Um, I do not understand what is happening. Neither do they, actually. The zombies are completely clueless as a fire elemental appears oh, okay. from fair a enough. gem of summoning. Uh, fair enough. Uh, the fire elemental... <sighs> uh, can the fire elemental fly? Yeah, it can. Can it, though? Okay. Let me see. <laughs> I think that's how... I think it's its only form of movement. <laughs> yeah, speed 50 feet, and then it's blank. 
uh, so it cannot fly, mm. uh, so it doesn't have, like, control over its movement in this space. Uh, and you watch as a fire mental, like, without gravity, uh, it's a lot more, like, it's a lot less humanoid looking, uh, but you summon it next to, like, a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, and it's now just kind of, like, this odd, sentient, like, thinking fire that doesn't have, like, eyes or anything. It's just, like, moving around in the space, uh, and fire is kind of, like, licking out and striking at some of the surrounding... Uh, some of the surrounding foes. Uh, a lot of them are kind of like directing their attention to the fire elemental now. now Is that really a good idea? Can it attack on the turn that I summon it? Uh, I will it say that it can. Sickness? Okay, cool. All right, it's gonna give two of them a big hug. All right. Uh, unfortunately, both of those are going to. Uh, of course, both of those are gonna miss. Good thing that uh, any creature that it is occupying the space of, uh, this happens to them. Copy and paste it for you. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Uh, I just want to make sure D10, that the right? viewers at home ah, get yes. to see the wonderful ability of the fire element. Uh, and it's a d10, uh, so go ahead and roll me that d10 on both of them, because they both sure. are. Uh, the fire elemental in this zero gravity space actually looks like it's a little bit larger even than that. Uh, it can probably get about 10 feet because it's not like bound to a location as much. Um, um, it is a uh, large a... creature. So is uh, it bigger than large? Yeah, it's probably like huge right now, although it also can't really move. It's like 15 um, feet. Uh, well, it's like 10 feet. Is, uh, or within 10 feet. 10, 10 feet is saying. large. Yeah. What I'm saying is the range on oh, its reach is bigger. Uh, so it's 10 feet range on the... Uh, so uh, each one is going to take a point of fire damage as they're getting kind of singed again they don't really seem to react to the pain aspect of it all are you going to try and jump up um does anyone look like they're being targeted by these zombies um one of them was looking like it was going after Uchankas, but most of them now look like they're going to move up into that fire elemental oh uh, well we want to we want to get in front of our cleric we don't want our cleric to be beaten on all right, so you're going to head in the same direction as Yuchenko's? Yeah, I'll give him a big hug when All I'm right. there. Uh, go ahead and make me an acrobatics check as you're trying to, like, direct yourself. I couldn't use that that turn that I saved up to kind of plot a course. Uh, that was for a very specific purpose that you did not use it for. Okay, uh, um, so what am I rolling? Um, do you have any, like, means? I guess you've already used a lot of stuff, so you probably don't have any means. Uh, go ahead and make me an acrobatics check, and you also probably have disadvantage at this time. So it's just a raw jump. <laughs> okay, then I am not gonna jump out. I'm gonna just sit here. Um. Okay, sure. I'm uh, good. Th that's gonna bring us then to Kuroga. Can't switch! You want to get over there? I can just, like, quietly nod and look kinda sad. I put out my hand! As I'm floating into zero G, uh, I take so Kirk on your uh, Yeah, so Crest still on my shoulders. I mean, it's zero G, so it's basically Peter Pan as Kurogan switch on <laughs> one arm, a cell crest on the other, or I guess a cell crest on the shoulders. Yes, I'm flying over to you, Chunkus. I am, and I'm grabbing him as well. <laughs> um, so now you're all kind of. And I'm dashing, using my dash action to get uh, to the. In a very Disney X moment, uh, Kurogan. He can fly, he can fly, he can fly, he can fly. Uh, uh, Kurogan can fly. flies you all over to the other side. Uh, a very useful Whee! ability in this particular instance. Um, and, or I guess in pretty much every instance, uh, yep. you, uh, you now uh, step down on the other side uh, over on the kind of eastern wave. Um, the one foe that was kind of pursuing you. Uh, is going to kind of levitate and move over uh, to that section, uh, and they are going to make an attack right as you're landing against you, you chunkus. Ah, he has this advantage because I use my protection ability. All right. Uh, good. So oh. Good. A twelve. Aha! That misses. Uh, and the second one is a fourteen. That also misses. Uh, so eat a bag of male genitalia. Uh, and he does into do that because there's none available but he would if there were uh, well he, who knows uh, he knows in his heart of hearts that he's done that uh, as uh, the punches just kind of uh, strike into your armor you chunkus uh, you can see his knuckles bloodying as they're impacted with it uh, as he's striking with axel absolute reckless abandon it was uh, uh the first strike was blocked 
slightly by my shield and shove this hand to the side. <laughs> right. Um, what are you all doing? Uh, that's gonna bring us to Selkris, but you're now kind of in this hallway. Uh, what do you want to do, Selkris? I'm gonna go down the hallway. Um, alright, you're gonna jump off of Korrigan's shoulders now that you're past this space, or are you gonna... Well, I guess I'll fire off an Eldritch Blaster too at the, the guy following us. He's... He's a little zombie-like. These aren't really good peons. They're ignoring me. Uh, yeah, these don't appear to make good uh, peons. Uh, as the Eldritch Blast kind of flies out, um, the first one, um, the first one, you see they once again kind of utilize that ability, and uh, a shield kind of comes up in front of them, but the second one pierces through it, a striking home roll damage. Alrighty. Got through. Have a bit of that for 11 points of force slash cold damage uh, as it strikes them. Uh, a little bit of their body kind of freezes up uh, and all of you are, are all of you just going to kind of like run down this path at this point? Is that fair yep, to assume? Bye. Nah. <laughs> um, yeah, but before before I start flying down, I am going to hit a couple times. Bye, uh, you're gonna Have do a good a time! Times. I'm going to hit a couple times and, and then move with my movement. Okay, um, you're going to attack the one that's still fighting you, Junkus. All right, go ahead and make me your uh, attack rolls. Oh, good, good. he's still good. fighting me. Um... Ah, uh, 11. 20 and 11. Uh, the 20 does hit, the 11 does hit. All right, hit. eight damage. <laughs> eight points of damage. Uh, a nice firm smack. Uh, what about you, uh, Switch? You said you wanted to do something as well? I'm going to hold the line with uh, my good friend Jeremiah. Okay, Switch. You now stand. Uh, you now stand at the precipice, getting ready to hold the line. Uh, you watch as these things are swarming uh, out, uh, and they're all just kind of floating in this strange kind of arms down head manner. Uh, as they're all moving first towards the fire elemental, uh, and they're just kind of like it, it seems that they're just prioritizing whatever is closest to them. Uh, but you know that the minute the fire elemental goes down, which will happen eventually. Uh, that that swarm is going to be moving towards you, uh, and so you're just going to bravely stand here at the uh, the end of this hallway to buy time for your allies as they're moving ahead. Yeah, um, I I want to get rid of this dude who's attached oh, yeah. to Euchonkis first, and okay. then I'm going to do something else on my next turn. Radical. Uh, we'll go ahead and make me an attack roll. Or your attack rolls. Uh, Twenty hits. Uh, for 13 points, not not quite downed. With the radiant, uh, not quite downed. No. All right, and then one more. Uh, 15. Uh, could I have pieces. gotten advantage from my banner hop, Jeremiah, helping me out? Um, I do not believe mounts can take the health action. Um, paladin mounts. Um, we'll give it to you. Sure. Go ahead and roll damage. Cool. I'll let the lawyer be on that one. Uh, you uh, swing in, and with uh, your second strike, uh, the one that was just pursuing you, Yuchankas, uh, yes. pre pretty relentlessly. Uh, it looked like it would have taken no prisoners other than you. Uh, and the, uh, Switch's sword kind of stabs it down in kind of the back, uh, probably part of the reason why it's a little easier to hit this time, because it was so fixated on Yuchankas, and finishes it off. Yeah. Uh, to describe it, it's like a big wooden club with, like, shark's teeth. Oh, yes, the uh, Leomano. So, oh, like, geez. the shark's teeth just rip into the spinal cord, and you just see it, like, you just hear the loud pop as the spinal cord just, like, <clears throat> batters. Like, like, pop right uh, And mm -hmm. the body just kind of falls lifeless mm. to the ground. Home cooking, eh, you chunkus? Yes. Uh, and... Just like, just like mom used to make. Uh, the rest of you uh, are going to run down the hallway and switch. You are going to stay. Is that the plan, everybody? Yep. I, I think we can kind of break down initiative at this point a little bit. Uh, but tell me, uh, switch what it is that your plan is here. You said you were going to do something. Yeah. Else on my turn. next turn, I'm going to drop divine favor and activate moonbeam so that my fire elemental is out of the moonbeam. So I can get as many zombies as I can in that moonbeam. So you're going to kind of like try and moonbeam the wave as it's moving up to the fire elemental, essentially. Uh, so exactly, everything has yeah. to pass through the moonbeam to get to the fire elemental. And if they like 
Well, like, it's right next to the fire elemental, right? So, like, if they group up on the elemental as they stand They're not inside... moving, like, completely idiotically. They're, like, moving around it so they can all get it at once. But you can get some that way. Yeah. But, yeah, like, they have to... Like, it's... I, I think I get the idea what they're element. going for. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. All right. And then I'm going to put away my Leomano and mount Jeremiah and pick out my lance Wonderful. so that I can get uh, that benefit of um, the range of the lance yeah. while so on top like, of Jeremiah. Uh, kind of like keep them from a distance uh, while you're... Uh, yeah. And if the fire this. elemental goes down, I'll just bring the moonbeam in front of Jeremiah so that I have the moonbeam happening while I'm using the lance. Makes sense. I understand your plan. Uh, we're going to cut back to you, I think, in a second. Uh, as sure. Switch, uh, as Switch, uh, you watch as uh, and you watch as she's just kind of there over at the entrance. Uh, do you say anything, Switch? Go. I got this. We'll need a way out. If we're uh, going to leave the same way that we came in. Sounds good. Good luck, Switch. Not good that luck. you'll need it. Yeah, you're my champion! Don't let me down! <laughs> Save some corpses uh, for me. Uh, and the three of you... Actually, uh, well, while I'm here, I just sort of drag the other corpses <laughs> right now <laughs> with behind me. <laughs> um, uh, the three of you just kind of... Uh, continue just kind of sprinting down the hallway ahead. Uh, as Switch, you just watch... Uh, you watch patiently, waiting for the moment when you will have to kill a lot of things. Uh, yeah, I mean, the fire elemental resists, like, all the damage they probably are going to throw at it. Are they immune to psychic? Uh, That's they're they immune feel. to fire and poison, and they resist bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Okay. Um, alright, so I'll keep that in mind, but for now, yeah. uh, we are going so, to... A hundred hit points you gotta get through. Yeah. Um, we are going to move to the three of you, who are... <laughs> Um, kind of running up ahead uh, and as you kind of continue down and actually I need to uh, pause for one second here guys um, sorry about this this will be just like two and it's gone switch it's valiantly gone. stands upon the frog like creature lance in hand shield in the other preparing to smite down the hordes of zombies that approach the fire elemental bravely fighting off these creatures. All right, very good. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. All right, so you continue kind of booking it down the hallway, uh, and as you reach the end of it, uh, you can see it kind of splits off again in two directions, but right in front of you, um, there is what appears to be uh, another one of those uh, another one of those panels uh, that you were seeing before that kind of marked smaller chambers that were being closed off, uh, and as you get near it, um, you hear uh, uh, you hear a voice kind of speak to you from inside of it uh, and that voice says quite simply who treads these halls I am so cross you respect me so Korgod is uh, yeah he's gonna do this he's gonna protect him from good and evil <laughs> um, all right you place <laughs> Protection from good and evil upon yourself. Just in case, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Who voices these halls? Yeah, what he said. Yeah. Who dares speak to me in such a presumptive tone? It was presumptive. I don't appreciate it either. Yes, yeah. how dare. I feel personally offended. Is that you, floating heads? No floating heads reply. Um, it's just the sound just kind of emanates from the other side of the door. Um, knock, knock. You are of the prime material. What? What? Okay. Very yeah. Good. This is good news. Um, the door uh, kind of slides open uh, and revealing a chamber within. Um, the space that you're in looks to be something along the lines of... The closest thing I could describe it to is, uh, and for the sake of time, uh, sort of a fantasy control room, uh, is the space that you're looking in. It looks like a spaceship control room. 
Uh, and as you move into it, you can see several of the figures that you saw before. Uh, however, they are not immediately trying to kill you. They stand, they're moving. Different ones of them are kind of like monitoring different things. You see some of them are kind of like uh, just operating buttons over uh, on the side of the uh, the outside of the chambers as there's maybe another like 20 or so of them in this room. Um, please enter and do so quickly. You're not being followed by any of our brethren, are you? Good. Oh, no. Uh, no. Well, I think they're all dead. Probably by now. Probably. I mean... One of our friends, Keon's... Friends? You said friends! No, I didn't! Shut <laughs> up! Get in there! No! I don't have friends! I am so crass! You've left someone behind. They will fall before long. Uh, she'll be fine. She'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, they'll figure it out. Yeah. Your confidence is... Perhaps misplaced, but I respect you for it nonetheless. No, my confidence is never misplaced. <laughs> yes, uh, she's a little... Okay. I assume that you have come here for one reason or another, in order to investigate our appearance. It was our intent. Yeah, I mean, yes. I came here to dissuade the idiots thinking that your giant spaceship was a false god, but... Yes. This is, this is entirely acceptable. Our purposes do not matter as long as they end in the same ends. Okay. So sure. what happened? Whatever. We have received an electrical failure upon arriving here. You still use electricity? Man, you guys are outdated. Yeah, magic's the new thing. Electricity was a term that we used in order to simplify it for your comprehension. It's actually a rather advanced form of psionics. Are you being presumptive again? <laughs> They kind of look down at you. Um, no. Most people don't get psionics. Most people do not understand psionics. The lizard is correct. You chunk us, yes? Yes. And you are. I try to read his mind. Uh, you, uh, you read his mind, and the thing that he says back to you is uh, Imwe. And Ingwe. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Yes. Good. Sure. So what do you need from us? This is my friend, Ingwe. Oh, oh sure, okay. <laughs> yeah, you just met. We require you to make Can repairs. yet I knew his name. We require you to make repairs on our central psionic core. Of course. Where is that? Um, you all of a sudden all feel in your kind of brain just a projective mental image for a second. You can see the entire ship. Uh, and then it kind of focuses down on a hallway, and you now understand the layout, and it would be kind of to the left uh, when you kind of walk out here, uh, and down a couple of, like, side regions, and then you see, like, the room that would be that space. Oh, that's easy. That's um, pretty close. Also, let's see... Ow, my brain shell! <laughs> the repairs, so how do we fix it? The repairs are routine. You must make sure that the creature that resides in that space returns to the space that was originally enclosing it. It escaped. Unfortunately, there was a simultaneous problem. Some of our crew member became infected with a sickness of the mind, one that we will repair when we leave here. But for now, we cannot go out, for it is contagious. Not to you, to us. Okay. Well, that really sucks for you guys. We yeah, it's not You've really... Been here for many, many years. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna switch back to my dragon greatsword. Well, I guess we have to get off. Your psionic <laughs> abilities sustain you while you're down here, right? Just, we just do not for... require food. We do not exactly. require just drink. Get mad. Just for reference, we're not supposed to kill the thing, right? It would be impossible for you to kill the thing. Okay, let's beat it up real good then. Let's go. Very well. Um... Yes. I will, okay. <laughs> uh, you, know, you kind of rush out, uh, kind of a little bit urgent under the fact that you know that Switch is also kind of holding the line, so to speak, for you, um, and kind of uh, rush down following the directions that uh, you were given. Uh, as you proceed, you move now um, through a lot of like strange places. Um, you can see a few more. Um, you, you can see a few more of those things kind of walking in uh, these hallways as well, not quite as concentrated uh, and. For narrative's sake, I'll say that you're able to finish them out without too much difficulty. Um, and they're kind of isolated, you know. Kurogon, massive dragon greatsword, a few slashes, uh, a few eldritch blasts, a few sacred flames. 
Um, they Something we can't handle. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, until you eventually arrive in another very large circular chamber. Uh, this one, you imagine at one time this chamber did have uh, the same kind of zero gravity as the other one, uh, but it does not appear to now. Uh, there are a lot of very sort of circular... Um, they're, they're at the center of the room, there is a circular shape uh, with a lot of different kind of cords that are reaching out from the outsides of the sphere into it, uh, lines connecting it uh, to the center of the room. And uh, all of those lines are kind of glowing a faint, faint blue light. Uh, you can see that the bottom of the chamber, there are some things that look a little bit more mechanical, uh, a little bit more traditional, uh, things uh, along the lines of kind of like pipes uh, and stuff like that. And there's kind of like a steady dripping of water uh, that has kind of filled up the bottom of this space um, up to uh, just a little bit below the threshold where you're walking into the room. Um, and all of those kind of cores that are connecting to the central sphere, uh, which you presume to be the cage that they were talking about, um, the top of it is kind of open. Uh, all of those cords are glowing blue, and as soon as you get close to it, they all cease to do so. They all, the room goes completely pitch black. I know that's a lot to take in in description. Well, I... Silcrest, you want to... You're still writing, right? Yeah, uh, okay, in that case, I'm gonna fly in. Um, oh, I'm gonna I, have a look-see. Yeah, I can see in the dark, it's fine. Um, I cannot, but, uh, let's see, uh, torch. <laughs> I, I just grab a torch and a little, little uh, fire breath. Just... And, uh, some good, good. old-fashioned... I will cast light on, on his torch. <laughs> <laughs> Extra lighted. Um, your torch is on fire and also under the effects of the light spell. Uh, and you don't really need light to see the thing that you think is the creature, um, you see what looks to be uh, gathered at the corner of the room where the light was kind of blue on those cords. Um, you can see what looks like a crackling elemental that is kind of leaning out of them. Uh, oh dear. I can't grab that. Hey you! Get back here! Don't you slurp uh, at me? Energy. Yeah, that's super disrespectful. Uh, uh, energy kind of... No one here is respectful to you guys. Uh, uh, energy kind of uh, crackles off of it uh, and is kind of like hitting the walls and stuff. As it hits the walls, it seems to like move out and around. Uh, I would like you guys to roll for initiative. Uh, switch. Hey, that's... Not crap initiative. Hey, that's um, also, me. Also roll for initiative. You've been watching okay. your fire elemental... Um, just kind of do battle uh, with the aid of the um, uh, with the aid of the moonbeam that you have kind of called down at this point. I mean, the moonbeam lasts for a minute, right? Uh, let me double check. Or is it uh -oh. longer? Than it is one minute. Yes. Okay. Um, the moonbeam three times. Okay. Uh, the moonbeam sort of fades uh, the first time and your fire elemental uh, is still up uh, and your friends have kind of gone and vanished and uh, you watch them kind of like move into uh, you watch them kind of move into the building uh, at this point um, and then they kind of are in there for a while you can see them as you're kind of occasionally turning back uh, they're doing something in that space you don't know uh, and you see them kind of leave and just start turning down a different direction. Uh, are you going to keep moonbeaming, or after the first moonbeaming, are you going to save your spells? Um, how does my fire elemental look? Does it look like the fire is like dissipating, like or almost um, dissipated? It's it's getting there. Yeah, you don't think it'll survive the second moonbeam? I don't think it'll survive, like, the entire duration of the second moonbeam. Yeah, that's what like, I mean by that. Based like, on the way things are going. Okay. Um, there, There is other things that I can do, but I don't... By the way, have the other guys... The rolled? fire elemental is taking any, like, effects or anything. It looks like yet. these are just basic attacks, right? Um, yeah, these are just strikes. They're really okay. Um, but the fire elemental with each kind of hit. Strikes I'm gonna it. stick around to do 
a divine sense to find out if these are well, if anything is going on with this. Uh, if there is any strong evil celestials, fiends, or undead. Um, they are not. Okay. Infection of the mind. And there is no desecrated or hallowed places either, correct? No. This place is very alien. Okay. I was not here to have any um, connection with the gods. Hmm. I'll, I'll go ahead and cast the second moonbeam and then I'm going to uh, I'll move it using an action after they kill the fire elemental so that it's in front of me and Jeremiah and then I probably would stay until either I'm low health, Jeremiah dies, or the second moonbeam dissipates. Okay. One of those conditions. Um, okay. Um, so, um, near, um, near the end of the second moonbeam, uh, Actually, at the end of the second moonbeam, the fire elemental fades. Exactly at the end? Exactly at the end. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I rolled for it. It was just fate. Yeah. Uh, does it seem like there's still a lot? Um, oh, yeah. There's a lot. Uh, the bodies are now just kind of like floating in the space. There are tons of Githzerai bodies that are uh, just kind of moving about the inside of the charred spot. blackened ashes yeah. and bones and yeah um you can see they haven't even stopped coming out of the inside of the thing yet like you can't see where they're coming from but there are more of them still walking up Oof. okay um in that case uh, I think this is the point where we're going to officially begin our initiative, uh, as the first to act is going to be once again... Oh wait, no, I thought that was you, Chunkus. Never mind, it's Gun. Hey, it's your boy. Um... I don't know if I can actually hit that thing, but I'm gonna try! Alright. But get it close enough, and I'm being it again, because it ignores all, uh... uh, resistances and immunities, so... You know, <laughs> stick a string of bees! <laughs> uh, you throw out bees. Nothing likes bees. Uh, the bees begin swarming across the room, uh, and uh, the uh, the kind of strange kind of cackling lightning doesn't really go to, like, dodge the bees. And then you watch the bees kind of, like, just run into it, and it starts, like, moving and jittering around, like it's somehow getting stung, even though ow, it's lightning. Ow, 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 ow! <laughs> Lightning's cracking out of it. Uh, Kurgan, that's your action. What else? Uh, I don't think I can really do anything else, so I'm not gonna do anything else. So I'm just gonna wait here and take it like a boss. Um. All right, fair enough. Uh, that's going to bring us to uh, Yuchankos. Hmm. A lightning e elemental. Hmm. It's not one of the cloud. No, but I don't. How big is this room? Is it the same size as the other one? Um, it's a bit smaller. Uh, it's about um, 90 feet across. It also see. has gravity, and there's also a lot of water on the ground. Oh, it has gravity, and there's it has, water. It has gravity, and there's, like, water, yeah. But this thing, this creature, is not on the ground. This creature is, like, sitting in what it looks like it's kind of, like, connected to one of the wires coming off the central thing right now. Hmm. Okay, um, I'll move in. Okay, you can go swimming? Yeah, because I can do that. And, Speed. Uh, swim 30 feet and then shatter the creature. Okay, um, Oop. right. He's going to make a constitution saving throw, which it fails. Wow, I don't even need to use my channel divinity. 
Oh my god! <laughs> oh god! Uh, as the thing kind of, uh, as you hit it in that space, it body kind of separates very far apart, and then kind of pulls back in, uh, and it seems to have a little bit of trouble reforming itself for a moment, but it's okay. I'm gonna telepathically tell it to get back in its cage. Um, get back in the cage! <laughs> uh, it responds to you in telepathy. I shall not be held again! Um, Do it! <laughs> uh, that's gonna bring us then to switch. Um, the creatures at the end of their last turn, um, the fire elemental fell, uh, and you're standing at the threshold, and you can see, like, the wave. Um, they're all in different places in the room that were just moving like lambs, like moths to the literal flame, uh, and now it's just kind of a wave as their directions all just kind of turn at once, and they're now headed towards you in the stopgap. Um, so I can throw two thrown weapons with an attack action, right? Uh, you can throw two thrown weapons, yes. Uh, if those are grenades, uh, that is considered the use an object and it's a discreet thing, but you, you but can... the acid vials. Uh, okay. yeah, you can throw both of those. Okay, um, and then I could... They have infinite range in this space maybe? as well, because... Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. okay, I'll, I'll... I'll give you three if you want. Yeah, okay, I'll throw three vials of acid then. All right, you chuck them, uh, and as they move into the zero gravity, they lose no momentum. Uh, so as they hit uh, each of the foes, uh, we'll go ahead and make me attacks. Uh, it's just a straight attack, no bonuses, but like strength and proficiency. Strength and proficiency. Okay, yep. I'm going to click proficiency for my saving throw. I'm going to check the box and just do that. Uh, sure. Oh, yep. <laughs> uh, yep. And no. Okay. Wait, that seems way too high. Plus ten. Uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, minus three. I think... So I think the second one ends up missing. Uh, it should be seven. Uh, but the thirty crit like, definitely bounce hits. off the wall and acid sprays. Uh, oh yeah, I mean there's acid in the room now. Uh, ambient yeah. that's just kind of floating around, uh, except for the stuff that got really heavily absorbed into that one dude's skin. I, uh, I only have four vials. Could I <laughs> item interaction the last one? Um. No, I mean three is as many as you can throw. Uh, attack, attack bonus. Uh, but roll damage on that for me. Uh, how much am I rolling? Uh, I can't remember what acid vial is. Uh, uh, please look up acid vial damage for me. Uh, and I'm doing. Uh, we will roll it when you get back. But in the meanwhile, uh, as we're been uh, been at it for a while, uh, we're just gonna back. move straight to. Oh, cool. What do you got? Uh, 2d6 acid damage. Alright, so roll 46 as old say it does critically hit is it gets him right in like the eyes. Um, that one is you definitely want me to roll in. like, I don't know, a d6 for everyone since there's acid in the air. Or... Uh, <laughs> you're good on that switch. Don't worry about the sure. acid in the air. Uh, that's gonna bring us now to just a, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a hefty bargain you were going for there. I gotta, I gotta ask, you know. Yeah, fair enough. That's something pretty new. Get. Selfress? Sorry, Selfress is sleepy. It is past her bedtime. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a critter. Uh, there's a critter of made of lightning and energy and magic and psionics. All right. Well, you junk is you, you use chatter, right? That seemed to work, right? It did something. Okay, well, I'll do that too. Oh, cool. It's just gonna cast Shatter. At... What level is the level that I can cast that at? I think it's five now. Sure. Um, that's a terrible Shatter. <laughs> but sure. Um, Alright, 18 oh, wait, points of thunder damage. It is going to succeed, unfortunately, on that roll. Um, so it's going to take. Uh, nine points of thunder damage as the shatter uh, explodes on the creature. It uh, kind of spreads and uh, does the kind of has a similar reaction to what you saw when you chunked these that although not quite as extreme. Uh, anything else on your turn, Sophie? Uh, Levi, you want to go zap it with your tail? Uh, Levi's gonna have to not gonna be able to make it all the way across the room as it's opposite you right now. Uh, but Levi oh. can like move closer to it if he wants. Yeah. Go, right. go on, Levi. I know you don't want to get zapped by it, but come on. Alright, um, the 
creature is actually just going to move downwards, um, and you see it just kind of move into the water. Uh, oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. It's gonna make its two attacks at you with range and with advantage. Um. At at who? You in the water. Uh, I you're see. in the water. <laughs> um. I need you to make me a Constitution saving throw as well. Uh, okay. Twice. Two of those. Uh, you are good on both counts. Uh, you only take 23 points of lightning damage, uh, rather than the additional plus three and plus six. Uh, oh. That's your thing. Uh, are you resistant to that or something? Uh. It seems like something that you would be resistant like to. Like you think. <laughs> but you're just not yet. Fair enough. Um, uh, as it kind of reaches in the water, you watch as it uh, cascades outwards from where its, its kind of tendrils reach down into it. Uh, and that is all it's going to do on its turn. Root. My turn! <laughs> nice saves, you chunkus. Uh, that's gonna uh, bring us to Krogon. What do you do? Yeah, um. Uh, ah, the... I'm gonna join the boat! Here, he gets another shatter. Uh, don't make oh, the man. save, don't make the save, don't make the save, don't make the save! <laughs> it makes the save. Wait, he gets a, it gets a advantage in the water or something? Yeah, he's magic resistance. Oh, well. For you uh, too. You still get the damage. So he still takes uh, eat it. <laughs> he still takes five points of thunder damage as shatter, shatter, shatter. Uh, you hear in the distance switch just um, three explosions of sound. Uh, and I am prepping another jar of bees for next round. <laughs> well, bees, oh yeah, he takes ten rounds. Well, the bees, he, he uh, takes the bees 10 just damage. happen. The bees are they just continuously it. blow out. It's oh fine. my god. Uh, <laughs> The bees. Uh, it takes 10 damage at the start of his turn. He already took it. He will again. Uh, that's going to bring us then to Switch. What do you want to do? Oh, wait. Let's do that. No, wait, wait. I think it was Uchonkus next. No, it's yeah, I'm sorry. Gith, it was Gith first and the other. Oh, one. yeah. Gith. Gith. Oh, God. I forgot about Gith. Um, Gith are now within your melee. Cool. Um, that's Gith's turn. Uh, there are four of them that are immediately next to you right now. Um, and. That's all the gift could do. Uh, that's going to then bring us to uh, Uchakas. Okay. How much water is in this room? Um, a lot. Like, it's filled up to the point that you're at, which is about 30 feet up off the ground. Oh, that's a lot of water. Yeah. That's a lot of water. Okay. Well, um... I guess I'll I store the Elrato. Um, Never done this before. You what? I will cast a spell, specifically this one. Ooh! All right. It's a bunch of ice. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's gonna start raining ice on this dude. Uh, he's gonna make up for starters next day, right? Those are. But, um. He's going to take half damage. Uh, I assume, right? But it's still yep. 13 damage. Uh, and that's in the whole... Oh, that's... Wait. How, what's the radius on that? Ooh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's a that's a fair question. I don't know if I would have done... <laughs> that's a 300-foot storm. Um, foot... No, no, no. It's a 20-foot radius. Oh, okay. That's much better. 40-foot <laughs> high cylinder. Um, on him. Okay. Uh, and or, well, uh, on a spot where it would hit him, but not the rest of us. Yeah, I understand. Uh, the ice storm <sighs> rains down as a blizzard kind of takes the space. You watch as even some of the water around him begins to freeze a little bit on the very surface. Yeah, technically that's difficult terrain. Uh, it's difficult terrain. <laughs> uh, so shall it be. Uh, anything else on your turn, you Uchankas? And he takes much damage. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna crawl out of the water. Uh... <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Yeah. All right. You kind of crawl back up to the uh, you crawl back up to the like little area, or do you want to hop on one of like the wires? Hmm. Uh, no, I'll hop out of the water and not on the electrical devices. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> just just asking. There's another option. Uh, that's gonna bring us then to. Um, that's gonna bring us then to switch. All right. You ready? Yep. So first of all. I'm going to splash the contents of my last acid bottle on the one closest to me. All right, you do so. For 2d6, 8 acid. 
Uh, make me an attack roll. Sure. All right, yeah. You, you do. Uh, they take eight points of acid damage. <laughs> the skin burns. Then I'm going to make sure that my shield is well equipped. Radical. Take my lance back out. And uh, I suddenly notice on my shield there's a little sticky note, and I like pick it off and I read it, and I like, oh, oh yeah, bam, small parchment, a bit of holy text written on it. It's a note from Farku saying, "Good luck." <laughs> <laughs> um, you shield of faith. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Uh, you kind of read the piece of uh, you read the piece of paper. You look down at the foes before you. Um, more of them are inbound. Uh, Jeremiah lets out the bravest bullfrog as possible. Um, yeah. um, Jeremiah has filled the faith as well. His paladin spell. Yep. Uh, fair, fair enough. Uh, and you get ready for the incoming onslaught. Uh, I think that's going to bring us then to Selkress. What do you want to do? So Levi is where? Uh, Levi is next to you. Or no, Levi is in the middle of the room. Uh, so right. Levi can get over to the creature if you want Levi to do so. Okay, is there any, like, not water by the creature? Um, yeah, you can stand on, like, the wires that, like, spread out throughout the room. All right, Levi. Uh, aren't you on my back? Yeah, but I'm talking about Levi. Oh, for Levi, Levi. okay, yeah. <laughs> Levi can get up on one of the wires. Okay. And so, <laughs> uh, so Chris will flip her. Uh, sure. I'm gonna crystal call her this stuff up. Levi, hear my infernal decree. Uh, this guy up. You all watch as Selcris kind of. Uh, leans down and uh, calls upon the power, and, and you know, she says it in the same Selcrest voice, but there's a weird weight behind it, uh, and in an instant you all feel an intense chill uh, as the room just kind of uh, grows incredibly cold, uh, and all of the water in this space instantly turns to solid ice. As that's a thing that your thing does. Uh, yep. And Levi turns into uh, Farm Devil. Okay, does that mean the energy thing is frozen in the ice um you'll have to see and, uh, <laughs> unfortunately ice is an even better conductor of electricity than water and then levi's gonna hurl some flame at the guy <laughs> all right uh coming out of fire and ice i love it uh go yeah. ahead and make me some attack rolls with levi or an attack sure. roll roll flame uh i think uh, i get two with multi oh, uh the eight will not do it and another one. The 19 absolutely will for 13 fire damage. Uh, it hits the form, <laughs> shifts, and kind of changes. Um, but it's not downed as of yet. Um, and that is going to bring us to... Uh, that is going to bring us to the creature's turn. Uh, who is going to... Uh, you watch us from where they are in the ice. They kind of, like, just shift up out of it. Uh, they reach up and touch one of the wires. Uh, and you see for a second, two of the wires glow blue in an instant. Uh, they're standing right over by the gap, uh, and they're gonna make, um, they're gonna make an attack, uh, two attacks against you, Kurogan. A flying guy, of course they are! Uh, 17. The 17 does not hit. It should, it should not have had advantage in 13. 13 oh, definitely man. doesn't hit. Uh, both miss, damn. Uh, and the creature's just there, kind of, again, crackling in the space. Uh, Hey, Lude! <laughs> uh, that's all for the foe's turn. Um, that's My turn! Bring us to Kurogon, what do you want to do? Chromatic Orb! <laughs> do, it. do it up. And it's gonna be acid. Um, for 20 damage. Radical. Uh, uh, that definitely hits. 20 points of acid damage. Uh, as it strikes the creature, it seems like it's having, like, uh, it's starting to get a little bit more sluggish with its movements. Um, uh, that's all I can do, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's also been consistently... Oh, actually, you know what? No! Action Surge! Oh, shit. It, it's right. above the ground, right? 
Uh, it's above the ground, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, so... Cool with you. You're near one of the wires, and it kind of, like, jumped out of one of the wires towards you. So, um... Is it close enough for me to hit? Oh, yeah. Then good, yeah, I'm going to... It, it, it melee you. you. Good. Fifteen? Um, fifteen is going to, uh, miss, unfortunately. Okay, I want a sixteen. Sixteen hits. Yay, eighteen damage. Uh, magic damage, too. It's <laughs> yeah, it's your, magic, so, uh, you know. <laughs> you strike... Um, you're that's grounded. max damage. <laughs> uh, that, man, nice. Well, uh, yeah, that's, a lot, say, that's a lot for just a swing. Um, <laughs> yep, and I you, do a lot of damage. Yeah, uh, and and you hit uh, for a lot of damage. Uh, anything else on? That's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. That's that's all I got. <laughs> um, yeah, the elemental at this point is looking like it's having a a harder time, kind of like moving. Um, it, it seemed like it, it's weakening. Uh, they mentioned that you wouldn't be able to kill it, but it's... You can weaken it! State. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna bring us then to a bunch of gifts that are gonna try and beat you up. Switch. Um, we will see how it goes. Um, all of these are just attacks. Let out. Oh, God. <laughs> First... Um... Uh. <laughs> Jesus. Um, what is your armor class right now, Switch? I think actually only the first one hits. 17 plus 1 plus 2 for my shield, that's 20, plus shield of faith is 22. Yep, that's what I thought. Good thing I shield the faith. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, but that first one you are going to need to make a concentration check on. Except for the you fact got... that I ignore crits. Oh, damn! Adamantine. Oh. Uh, so you still, you will only take in that case... Um, well, that's still a lot of damage. Uh, you still take 28 points of damage uh, between uh, between the just the regular bludgeoning against uh, Psychic. All right, and uh, it's DC 14 for that, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. You hold! Hey! Oh, yeah. <laughs> the first wave of attacks comes in. These kind of strange uh, ghost-like creatures. Uh, flurries of blows. Uh, Jeremiah is kind of moving and trying to make you a little bit harder to hit with his presence. Uh, and you shield and deflect them away with all of your might. Um, except one. This looks fast. Uh, well, except for one that hits. Uh, and in that kind of flurry, it kind of catches you about the jaw. Um, you manage to maintain control over your shield. Uchankas. Hmm? Your turn. Okay. Your turn. Oh, yeah. okay. I will. Well, I'm gonna shatter because I am right next I to do. it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a way I can aim it to not. It's fine. Aim go you. for it. It's fine. Go for it. <laughs> um, it succeeds. Uh, it's gonna take half damage, or is it going to take half of more damage, or just that damage? Just that damage. Okay. It takes nine points of thunder damage uh, as it explodes in the space. Uh, and, um, yep, I guess that's it. Um, alright, uh, yeah, uh, at this point, the creature's, like, movements are very sluggish. Um, uh, and that's going to bring us then to switch. What do you want to do? I'm going to use a bonus action, and I'm going to say, I just realized this sickness of the mind is just one big D&D &D time technical difficulty. Alright, fair enough. Uh, and you, uh, you you chug yourself a healing potion. Uh, you still have an action. Alright, and then my action is going to be lay on hand. Actually, no, I don't need to lay on hands. That drink was okay. Uh, we're gonna take the dodge action. Cause they're, they're drawn like Moss of the Flame, right? So I'm just yep. gonna dance around and take that dodge. Uh, Right. Where are you standing, by the way? You're right on the edge, right? I'm right in the hallway. Right okay. on the edge. Okay. Um, Jeremiah's a big boy. Okay. Uh, you, uh, chug your healing potion uh, and get ready to jump around as best you absolutely can. Jeremiah uh, as, is dodging as well. Jeremiah was a big boy. Uh, as we move now to... Uh, I thought he was a bullfrog. Uh, so, wait. Yeah, so so grass. Yeah, I'm victory. So it, it's looking weakened, like weakened yeah. enough to throw it back in its house. I mean, it's a question of how you want to get it into its house. 
You can't exactly grab it, can you? Uh, it probably would be tough. Mm, that's true. Um, you guys have any ways of moving that thing around? Not particularly. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> I have a jar full of bees if that works. Hey, hey, Pete, is it reasonable for me to have insulated gloves? Um... I work with a lot of electricity. I think that's, uh, I think that's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Alright, I can put it back in with my gloves. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then, uh, I'll just have, I'll, I'll provide orbital bombardment. Here we go! Uh, you just attack him with everything you got? Yep. Alright, go for bombardment. it. Bombardment! Bam, bam! <laughs> hit, hit! Bombardment! Hit! Hit! Oh god, so much. Roll the damage, oh, yeah. <laughs> Two more hits, jeez. Um. <laughs> no, my power! You electric doodad thief! <laughs> um, yeah, it's like not even like trying to like get inside the wires anymore. It's kind of like almost laying across them uh, as the energy is kind of like forming on the ground as you <laughs> beat the hell out of it uh, from a distance. As it gets to this creature's turn, uh, it's going to raise one pathetic hand towards you, Pyrogun. 22! I'm gonna shield. Uh, that's a good idea. Oh, wait, that was the wrong enemy. <laughs> yeah, that is the wrong enemy. Uh, doesn't matter. You shield the hit. It's fine. Uh, it had one less to hit, so... Uh, you shield. Um, and... <laughs> just a golden barrier yeah. appears. <laughs> yeah, you block it. Uh, and its body is just now kind of like cast upon the ground as we go back to your turn, Karogan. Oh, good. Uh, cause, you know, uh, here. Uh, you're just gonna be, you're just gonna pound it. I'm just gonna uh, pound it. Slam, slam. Uh, you bring your dragon great sword down. The, first, the second one misses. Actually, no, at this point it hits. It's pro. You have advantage on all this shit. <laughs> Oh, in that case, let me just, you know, roll over time, in case I get a crit, you know, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 18 and 18, 13, yep. or... Wh whichever da of those damages you oh, want. Yeah, the, second, the second damage. Okay, uh, 17 damage and 14 damage. damage. <laughs> 27 <laughs> points of damage. That's more than 27. That's, that's 33, <laughs> or something like that. Um, 31, 31 um, damage. All right, we move now to uh, we move now to switch, preparing, uh, preparing themselves for the incoming storm, uh, and isn't this the gift? Yeah, it's the uh, gift turn. Yeah, I know. It's basically switch's turn. It's the enemy turn uh, at this point. Uh, and I made a mistake, by the way, last time, but I only attacked with each of them once. But they were supposed to attack twice, which they are going to do this time correctly. Uh, oh, they're all disadvantaged. Oh, they're all disadvantaged. Um, that's the first one misses. Uh, miss, 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 miss. This <laughs> is whiff, 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 whiff. Switch, you are like the water. As you uh, move out of the way, the strikes that you are too slow to move out of the way get blocked by your armor. The strikes that your armor don't catch get picked up by a shield. And the strikes that your shield don't get picked don't catch get picked up by your Jeremiah. Um, and the ones that don't get picked up by Jeremiah get picked up by the invisible power of my faith. Uh, my enough. faith is my shield. Uh, you watch as two more kind of fly up into the space around you. Taking heavy fire! <laughs> um, that's it. Uh, your turn, Switch. Oh, wait, no, it's uh, your Chunkus' turn. Yep. Right. Call, call back. Actually, you chunk this would have gone before switch, here. but okay. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Yeah. I'll go and this. go over to the lightning elemental. Yep. And I will put on my gloves. <laughs> and I'm going to try and force him into the machine. Go ahead and make me an athletics check. You would have disadvantage uh, because you're trying to pick up lightning. Uh, but that's negated by the fact that he's dead tired and he's kind of taken on some more physical properties. You don't take any damage for touching um, well, he's got to contest it with his dex, which is very good. So you're probably... Oh, actually, he can't really fail. Yeah. Uh, Get in the machine! Uh, uh, you hear in his brain, uh, I don't wanna! 
I just don't know. You know what? Like a child. This is this. The... Screw you! I take out the time breaker and use it. <laughs> I don't remember what that does. Uh, it breaks uh, time. Yeah, the the this amulet of rotating rings and yada yada, uh, blah blah blah. Oh, it's back in the bag now, and you have another turn. Yes. All right, do it. Uh, and, okay, yeah. Get in the, get in the machine. Uh, <laughs> go to your room. Go to your room, <laughs> sir. Um. <coughs> you tell him you talk us. For what it's worth, it can't take reactions. I don't think that matters. Oh but... shit. Uh, well, I don't know. That makes sense to me. You're out of time right now. Uh, I'm gonna give you this because it's rad as hell and it's a one-time consumable item. Where... Story, story plot thing. <laughs> uh, no, I mean this is an item that destroys itself on use. So I think this is fair as it cannot take reactions or move. Uh, you chunk us, time freezes around you. Uh, you watch as Kurogon's like, it's like a child. And he just stops mid-sentence. Uh, and you just- It's like a child. <laughs> the world like feels heavy as you move down and reach and grab your hands around just kind of what would be the legs of this creature. Uh, and you just walk dragging it through time uh, and reach up and slam it, uh, and time comes back in. You watch as Yuchankas teleports a couple of inches, uh, and is, like, got it by, like, the legs, and is just, uh, like a, like, whipping a towel down into the big kind of reactor at the center. He just appears, slamming the lightning elemental into it. Uh, you shut the lid close, and uh, you watch as the, uh, you watch as the network of power all of a sudden starts to flood, and this room is lit once more. The water starts to drain. <laughs> You're going Actually, into... I'm sorry, it's all ice. Nothing happened. You're going ice. into a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> I see uh, what you did there! Chalkus takes a point of psychic damage from the latent psychic energy for that. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Uh, uh, and... Uh... <laughs> uh <laughs> it this <laughs> oh. Switch. Yo. What do you do? Still dancing my dance. We continue to dodge. Up. You continue to dodge. Wonderful. Yep. Um, and everyone, uh, at this point, y'all gonna piece? Uh, uh, I mean, we should probably. You're done. Yeah, I guess right, so. Let's go get Switch, and then I guess we go? Maybe well, we we're gonna stop. talk to guy, the, the alien dudes. They were yeah, really presumptive, though. Happen. I really don't like them. <laughs> I mean, I don't die there, but I, I, they I need mean, to leave, I, so... I like Ingwei. <laughs> you just met him! It's just just because you know his name. Yeah. Uh, and I'm assuming that this conversation is happening as you're running. Yeah, as we're walking, yeah, uh, as we're running, flying, uh, whatever. Switch. Um, you got a couple of rounds. Uh, uh, at them moving at a full kind of pace, um, you got about realistically four rounds before they get there um that's cool i'm i'm a, I'm a you dance ready? my dance you ready let's do uh, it two rounds and you guys will be at the door uh to talk to the guys if you want to i got um, 10 minutes of shield of faith i can do this all day all right all day and by all day uh, i mean 10 minutes there are there are six of them now and they will be striking at you uh the first <laughs> Uh oh, there's a hit. Uh -oh. You can make me a uh, concentration check. Could uh, could I have also been bonus action drinking potions? Um, well, you. This is just one round that we're doing right now, so yeah, you already sure. did that on your last okay. time. So yeah, in between, yeah. you'll be able to. Drink I'll, I'll roll. I'll roll a potion for that last one. Um, all right. So you take twenty five points of damage. Um, that, and you should make me that a sucks. Yeah. Concentration. Uh, let me con. That. Uh, 25 have this 12. Yes. Oh no. Uh, and Shield of Faith goes down. Um, it shouldn't have been halved. What does it have from? Uh, the DC, the... right? Yeah. For the what? The, the DC. The deep... For concentration. Oh, chance. oh, I thought you were saying for the damage was halved. Yeah, okay. no. That'd be yeah. weird. Um, alright. Um, next two. Uh, next two. 23. A lucky strike. That's a 20. Have another. Um, that's three left. Oh my god. Oh. 
switch that's... Is, is this a new round, or is this... This is one round. This is all in one round? Yeah. They all have two oh. attacks, and there's six of them. Uh, these are all at disadvantage, too. Two, three, four. Brutal. Is, was that the last one? Five, that six, crit? Seven, eight. Uh, there's still four more that have not happened yet. What? Uh, Wait, wouldn't I wouldn't I have had a go in between though? No, there's six. There's six of them floating because you're right one, at the threshold. One, two, three. Each of, oh, each of them has two attacks. More. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, okay. Are you still up after yeah. that one? No, I am. I'm down after that last one. The double crits put me down, even though oh. I ignore. Oh, uh, no even, even with the even with the twenty six. Yep. Um, and at the end of this round, um, they've been held back for a very long time, but switch falls. Uh, switch, describe your final moment. I imagine that there's like a fireball grenade that goes off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, as switch kind of uh, falls down to one knee. Um, uh, you watch as, uh, just kind of like, you're all at this point, you're kind of like turning around the corner, uh, and you see Switch, uh, up ahead, like, on Jeremiah, lance out. All of the, uh, kind of swarming creatures are just gathered at the threshold. You see behind Switch are, like, 20 more of these things that are just there at the stopgap, uh, and Switch kind of, uh, kind of sticks up a lance into one, uh, a couple more, like, punches, Tenek about the chin and, uh, the chin and face, uh, and then, uh, another kind of gut shot hit switch and switch like falls off of jeremiah uh and you see as they start kind of swarming on top of them at the end of the hallway you all just witness um this huge sort of explosion as the fireball um kind of cascades some of the uh gets dry in the area all kind of are incinerated and kind of fall down in the space uh and then after a brief calm um, switch brought you an incredible amount of time but now the flood begins moving down the hallway you are at the door and I'm now on death saves, correct? Um, the, the creatures finish you off. <laughs> Rip. Yeah. Time to leave! Uh, I'm gonna- Switch! You weren't supposed to die! Oh. I'm gonna take out my candy bag, an item I've never used. <laughs> but of course. <laughs> and, and I'll throw a dummy bear over there, and I'm like, alright, that'll probably buy us some time, right? A round? <laughs> um. Yeah. You're at the you're at the door to the thing. Uh, you're That'll buy us around. Let's get if inside. You, if you wish to be out the way that you came, uh, you can do that, or you can, um, uh, you can be. Aren't they blocking the way we came? Yeah, they're blocking the way that you came. Are you gonna go back to the door where the people were talking to you before? Yeah. yeah let's talk to Ingwe. <laughs> um, all right, you talk to Ingwe. Ingwe uh, is cool. Door, and, and as you get to it, um, you kind of pause and you go to turn down and you see that last kind of desperate moment. Um, and uh, you kind of duck and turn into the uh, you duck and turn into the rope as the panel kind of opens very quickly and then closes down behind you. Um, and Ingwe stands now before you. Uh, he speaks to you. You have succeeded in routing the power back onto the psionic generator. Yeah. You have done very well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you yep. for your help. Our friend died. I mean, Peon died. Champion. Friend. No, I'm tired! Leave me alone! I apologize very much for your loss. Uh, it's okay, uh, he'll be back fine. in like 10 minutes. Yeah, she, she's fine. She's probably <laughs> waiting for us back at the shop, so we should get going. Yeah. It is a little bit difficult for me to dredge up emotion. She killed me. Me too! She killed nearly 30 of my friends. Ah, that's just like her. So proud. She really is a champion. Sorry, they're a little bit unhinged, but <laughs> you're emotionally stunted too. <laughs> they just kind of look at you and they say nothing, and they just stare at you with a blank face. Each of us. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> um, and um, they say to you, it would appear that we have rerouted power. We are going to leave this place. I assume you do not wish to travel with us. We're Correct. not. No. We gotta get paid. We can't get paid when we're still on here. We'll yeah. We'll return to our home so that our friends can be cured. Okay. Uh, You'll be uh, removed from this space. Okay. Right. Get us uh, out of here. 
Uh, and as soon as he says kind of goodbye, um, all of you feel yourselves, your bodies kind of start to shift. Bring me down, Scotty! Ingwe! Um, <laughs> and you are beamed downwards. Um, uh, in a brief moment, you are kind of now just standing on the ground beneath the huge, uh, the huge kind of black monolith. Uh, and as you kind of look up at it, very slowly the rumbling sound fades into the distance. Uh, and it begins to kind of just Bye. as it moves upwards the lights kind of flash uh, and then the reality around it just starts to kind of like bend you can uh, as you kind of like hold your hand into it your hand like the image of your hand even just gets distorted as you like kind of block your eyes uh, and then it's just gone uh, and there's kind of nothing left in its place bye Ingwe those guys were kind of assholes, weren't they? <laughs> and it's just silent, save for the desert wind. They're gonna carry me home. Selcrest so puts, uh, I mean, Corgon puts Selcrest so on his shoulder. Still flying, by the way. <laughs> and you hear uh, over to your left as you kind of come out, um, just three people there. Uh, and as you appear, you just hear, Raise a great big cloud. Yes, <laughs> praise the big. Where's everyone else? Uh, everyone else went home, but the three people that were listening to that doomsday are still there. You three, go get everyone else, and you tell them the cloud. Yeah. I'll come with you. You know yeah, what? Yeah, praise, praise the cloud. Yeah. Obviously, the more peons he has, the more peons I have. I'm not your peon. I've told you this before. Yes, you're my champion. Obviously. Um, that's You're just better than a normal peon. That's just clever wordplay to make it sound like I'm less of a peon to you, but I'm not your peon. <laughs> uh, and as this You're classic so like argument peon. continues, um, you eventually find your uh, way home as you've completed this mythic journey. You have each gained two points of experience, and you have each gained 300 Bartholomew bucks. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, Kurgoth, now level eight. eight. Yes, level eight club. Switch. It was, a it was a monstrous stand. Yes, well done. You did it! Good job, uh, Switch! You were amazing. Uh, there was a big escape threat that was going to be uh, the things chasing after you as you were battling the lightning elemental that didn't happen. <laughs> but, uh, damn, Switch. Uh, yeah. Rip. Really Rip. heroic. Good job. Um, but You have elevated Wait, in do status. Wait, drive Switch's body? Did we get that? Could we have gotten? Did they move Switch's oh, body okay. out with us? Oh, it disappeared. Switch's, uh, Switch's body disappears. After oh, immediately. Explosion. Okay. Yeah, and appears yeah. at Bartholomew's shop. Oh right, it exploded. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, you return. Do any? Do any of you wish to shop? Yeah, 